Well, Rear Admiral Chris Parry is former Director of Development, Concepts and Doctrine at the MOD. And uh, he uh, also commanded the UK's Amphibious Task Force. When I spoke to him a little bit earlier on, I asked him whether Admiral Stanhope was right to speak out. I think if we look at the words in detail, he's actually being quite careful. But what he is doing is fundamentally criticising uh, the settlement from the Strategic Defence and Security Review. Uh, and he's saying we've simply cut very quickly and uh, our commitments at the moment exceed our resources. Do you agree with his assertion that we won't be able to continue operations in Libya much past the summer unless we make cuts elsewhere? I think in tandem with what uh, is happening in terms of redundancies and the other cuts to uh, the Royal Navy's structure, uh, particularly in terms of the number of hulls, that may well be the case. I think a certain amount of management uh, in both the maintenance routines and the deployment patterns will allow us to uh, meet the requirements flexibly, but I think it will be a struggle. He said the campaign in Libya would have been much easier to manage if we'd have had at our disposal the Harrier, um, HMS Ark Royal. Do you agree with that assertion? Well, I think uh, there are certain capabilities that Ark Royal and her Harriers would have brought to the game. Uh, the first is they'd have been a lot closer to the Libyan coast and uh, could have upped the cycle rate uh, in the number of sorties. Uh, they also have uh, weapons, I think, that would be more suitable for the sort of campaign uh, that is going on in Libya. After all, we've intervened on a humanitarian mission and the sort of paveways and the rockets that are available to the Harrier uh, with their sort of uh, precision um, are probably more suitable than the thousand pound bombs that the tornadoes are delivering. Do you think it's time that the defence review was looked at again? Uh, without question. Um, I, I'm one of those who've said from day one that the uh, Strategic Defence and Security Review was a fiscally uh, driven review and not one that was driven by our strategic interests either now or in the future. We need a fundamental relook at this. Um, the government has been forced to relook at their plans for the National Health Service. Uh, I don't see why they shouldn't feel uh, equally constant stricken about uh, relooking at defence. If we need to relook at defence and if we need to make cuts elsewhere if Libya goes on much past the summer, where do you see those cuts as needing to come from? Presumably, you would say not the Royal Navy. No, I would say that actually uh, Libya is a war of choice and it should be paid for outside the defence budget from the uh, Treasury Reserve. Uh, this is a, a war that we chose to get involved in and I don't think it really should be impacting on the defence establishment. What we do have to do is reorder uh, the way we integrate our forces from all three services to make sure we get the maximum effect from our defence uh, posture uh, both now and in the future. And I think at the uh, start of that, we have to revisit the strategic assumptions uh, that led to the last SDSR. And uh, let's uh, have a look at what we need and then see what it's going to cost us. Militarily, then, are boots on the ground a way forward for you? I don't think you should rule anything out uh, in wartime. Uh, otherwise, you constrain yourself and you give advantages uh, to your opponent. Uh, my advice throughout has been that we put uh, amphibious troops uh, on amphibious ships uh, offshore so they can intervene in case there is uh, an imminent massacre. Uh, but also they're available if the Libyan people need the assurance of uh, troops on the ground as and when uh, they ask for them.